I'm Paul. This is Polymate 3D. And this is the Test Kind platform. So the Kind Test platform was created to help with my own 3D printed speaker driver projects, but also capture information that will hopefully be helpful when it comes to FDM 3D printing. By using sound, we will be looking at how stiff a material is across the Z axis, how it deals with absorbing shocks, and what stage it absorbs high frequencies. The platform consists of a fixed magnet motor, spider suspension, and flat response calibrated microphone designed for capturing this kind of information. Each material will be used to create three cone profiles, produced to help look at different properties. Each one will have a voice coil of the same length of wire and wound to the same height to produce the same power output from the motor and inductance. The cone is a push fit allowing quick and easy hot swapping of cones without glue residue to keep results as clean and consistent as possible. Finally, the test is not destructive so we can go back and examine the same samples and add something to look at the differences. Now before I dive into how this test works and comparing different materials, if you are looking for a more traditional approach to testing materials, please go and check out Stefan of CNC Kitchen or Tom for a more normal approach. So how does this test work? A cone is fitted and white noise is run into it to set the volume at a consistent level. A log sweep is then run from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz and captured with the microphone. The three cone shapes are designed to help highlight key areas I want to explore. The cone shapes are 45 degree flat cone. This cone is a good center point that we can tweak from and so it gives a good baseline as to how useful the material will be. It also allows an equal amount of chance for the material to buckle in either direction, highlighting if a material is struggling to cope. Concave cone. This cone is built solely to look at the breakup point of the material and how it reacts after this. The stiffer material, the higher the frequency will be. After this point, the distance between the peaks and troughs will help us understand how much damping the material has for it to control the frequency response. Convex cone. Last but not least is the convex cone. A more typical cone shape for a speaker, its shape is built to try and help extend the breakup point further, but the larger overhang may show if the material is not stiff enough. From these results, I will then be looking at graphs for, for frequency response, distortion, and impulse to gather the following information. Frequency response, the usual range the material can extend to. Damping, how controlled is the material across the frequency response? Distortion, what is the peak distortion value? Other details recorded will be maximum frequency range possible, cone breakup point for each material and cone, and what was the maximum overhang possible using a single layer circle that gradually increases. Once it fails, it fails. So let's finally get into the data. We're looking at three materials today, which are PLA, PETG, and ABS. Later videos, we'll look at single materials at a time. The three today is to give us some context. So let's start with PLA. The 45 degree PLA cone extends to 13.2 kHz and does a reasonable job with damping, producing a give or take 8.5 decibel variance. Cone breakup is at a decent 4.3 kHz and distortion stays below 1% from 200 Hz all the way up to the limit that I can test of 10 kHz. This is a really good sign. The concave PLA cone is showing a breakup point of 3.1 kHz, which is good from experience. Damping is not so good with a variance of 14.5 decibels. This shows how PLA does not want to give and when it does it can do so very harshly. Distortion goes beyond 1% at 225 Hz which is not desired. At that frequency it should be acting as a piston and this although minor would stop me from using this in case this is, gets worse over time. Maybe something for us to relook at in another video. The final PLA cone is convex and with a frequency response extending to 13.2 kHz, so the material is still coping with the big overhang at the tip of the cone. This is also confirmed with a spike at the cone breakup all the way up at 7.2 kHz, although distortion reaching 1.4% is showing that we are at the limit. Variance is a give or take 10.5 decibels, sticking close to previous results. 
So after looking over all three cones and averaging the 45 degree and convex cones, we end up with a score of 20 out of 30. How is this compared to real world drivers? Get subscribed to find out in the next video where the results will be peered against industry drivers. In the overhang test, the print was clean for both 50 and 60 degree overhangs, failing part of the way up 70 degrees. It will be interesting to see if any other material can beat this. Moving on now to PETG. The 45 degree cone extends to 11.5 kHz and has a variance of give or take 11 decibels. Damping is interesting on this one as the key breakup mode happens, but after this it is much cleaner before rolling off earlier. This along with cone breakup at 3.3 kHz shows that PETG is less stiff compared to PLA across the z-axis. The fun thing to look at with this cone is the distortion between 220 and 440 Hz. Here the distortion jumps up to 6.9% and is clearly showing that the cone is not acting as a piston like it should at this frequency range. This may fix itself with added control from the surround, but it's not an ideal situation. This may mean changes to WF81's cone at late notice to make sure it performs under long term stress. Next, the concave cone continues to show how much softer it is to the PLA version with a breakup point of 2.4 kHz. With a variance of give or take 14 decibels, it also shows during this breakup stage to not perform well. Distortion is under control, however, with a peak of 1.6%, showing PETG can be used in some way, so long as the cone is given some shape. The final PETG cone, Convex, pushes the breakup frequency to 6.3 kHz with a variance of give or take 8.5 decibels. This is also the flattest we have seen, which is showing PETG to really be all over the place compared to PLA. What we are seeing is a material which, when it gives way, it really goes, and so working with it to achieve a good result is more taxing. However, the earlier roll-off in the high frequency response shows that if kept within its limits, it absorbs some sound energy and results in a flower response. Looking over the three PETG cones, PETG turns out to be a bit of a mixed bag. It flexes easier, and this can result in a much higher distortion, but when kept in its narrow window, it can achieve a pretty good result. Averaging the scores of the 45 degree and convex cone, we get a score of 17. In the overhang test, the print was clean for both 50 and 60 degree overhangs, failing part of the way up on 70 degrees. This is a good result. And the last one for today, ABS. Until these tests, I had not really given ABS much chance except really early on. What is everyone expecting? Let's find out. The first cone, 45 degree, extends to 13.2 kHz, matching the PLA cone. With a variance of give or take 10 decibels, this cone is slightly less controlled than the PLA variant, and distortion is good, peaking at 1% in only one location. Interestingly, is the roll off beyond 10 kHz, which almost matches PLA, bringing into question how the lack of a phase plug is affecting things. Yet another thing to look at from here onwards a breakup point of 4 kHz is coming very close to the PLA cone as well. Overall, this performance is very good for the frequency response it can achieve. Next, the concave cone breakup point, which is 2.8 kHz, lands it in the middle between PLA and PETG cones. A variance of give or take 12.5 decibels shows its ability to control itself during breakup continues to be a little worse than the PLA version. What does come up, however, on this cone is a breakup around 265Hz. The blip is minor and the distortion only comes up to 1.3%. But I attempted two of this cone and the exact same result occurred. When looking at the printed cone, you can see a distorted shape due to the shrinkage of normal ABS. I believe this is the reason, but it's something we may need to look into at some point. The final of the nine cones, the ABS convex cone, continues to extend its frequency range to 13.2 kHz. Variance is give or take 10 decibels, which brings it in with PLA, and the distortion comes up to 1.5% which is still good at 7 kHz. Looking over the three ABS cones, I was pleasantly surprised to see ABS trading blows in distortion and stiffness of material over the z-axis. Pair this with its higher thermal limits, it's a really good choice for drivers which require higher power handling. Averaging the 45 degree and convex cones leaves ABS with a score of 20, the same as PLA. So how do they compare to one another? 
Starting with frequency response, PLA and ABS perform and extend the same distance when it comes to the same shape and size. I don't believe this is coincidence and we'll be looking at phase plugs at some stage to help see their true limits. PETG however shows its limits there at 11.5 kHz, still very usable for a mid-range or woofer driver. Next is damping. We can see from the graph that different materials are reacting to the cone shape in different ways, PETG being the most susceptible, followed by PLA and then ABS. Looking at the result we can from these, I believe each one of these materials could be made to work rather well, and we'll be interested to see how this goes with future materials including composites. Next is cone breakup on the concave cone. This was deliberately built to capture a clean breakup point and this in turn would show us how rigid the material is along the z-axis. The stiffer the material, the higher the frequency it will hit before the breakup point. I was honestly expecting PETG and ABS to be neck and neck with PLA pulling away, so this was not the case with ABS giving a pleasant surprise to its performance here. Finally is distortion, and all results really have been fantastic. The odd areas of concern were all minor except PETG with the 45 degree cone. This is showing that PETG is not stiff enough to support the 45 degree incline without buckling both ways. Simply adding some shape to the cone resolves this and leaves the cone's distortion out of the picture. The suspension system would be a much bigger factor here. This doesn't however mean they sound the same either. Let's have a quick look at impulse. Impulse is a very short noise emitted to see how the sound decays. Now there are differences from the cone shape, but more interesting is how PETG performs compared to ABS and PLA. ABS and PLA drop down from 100% of energy level down to 5% nicely, but then continue to ring until it is below 2% at 4 milliseconds. Very small detail and energy levels, but something to take note of. Compare this to PETG, which drops below 2% in just 2.1 milliseconds, showing its ability to absorb and sound energy compared to ABS and PLA. So now we have some good data on some common generic filament materials. Next I will get a few industry drivers and put them against them using exactly the same tests to see how the 3D printed cones compare against them. If you've made it this far, a big thanks from me and I hope the data here was useful. The raw data will be available to my Patreon supporters who help make this possible. If you want to dive deeper into speaker driver design or want access to more drivers and cabinets, consider joining. Want to be in the know for the next video? Subscribe and click that little bell to be posted the moment it comes up. And finally, I'm pretty active over on Twitter, so if you have a question or feedback, feel free to follow me there and message me. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.